Hey guys, Jeremy at Gilbrook Farm. Uh, we just got done moving the chickens over to a new spot and restringing the line. And uh, it's about 85-90% humidity outside, so we try not to spend too much time out during the day, so that's why I'm not doing many projects outside. They're usually outside in the mornings or at night. But it got, to, it got me thinking when I was moving the, the chickens about how uh, designs of things you build change over time as you use them and uh, why some people do some of the things they do. Take this for example. This barrel, this is a barrel bolt. Uh, you use it to lock a door or you know a, a, a panel onto another panel. And it seems like a great idea when you're designing something, but when you're designing something you can never account for every possible thing that's going to happen. Especially on a structure that's dynamic and moving and, and, and things like that. So I always try to um, once I build something, I always try to sort of pay attention to it over time and see how, like if, for an example, the chicken coop, see how the animals interact with it and use it, see how uh, easy it is to use the features that we may, made, or see what really just doesn't work and then make adjustments and continually refine um, that design. So again, this example is a barrel bolt. And these work great when you're building a, something like a shed or any structure that is meant to be built and not moved. But on a mobile chicken coop like this, these are no good. We have to kind of twist and move the whole thing so that the door lines up so that it'll latch. And I got me to thinking, uh, this was an extra couple dollars, so you know, however many doors you have on, on your structure, you're spending money you don't need to spend. So that made me understand why farmers do this. This is the creep feeder door I built to keep the little ones away from the big ones, but allow the little ones to go inside to eat and keep the big ones out. And it's just a simple stupid block. And it works perfect. And it doesn't matter if this shifts or not because it doesn't have to line anything up. Didn't cost anything. Now you may remember um, I wanted to replace these wheels because the other ones were too small. I finally got around to doing that and I ended up replacing a lot of these parts and we put these spoked wheels on that Jamie found at a uh, just a junk place. And they worked once. Uh, someone tried to move this by herself without pushing and turning. She tried to pivot it. That didn't work. I'm not sure what we're going to do now. This thing's going to stay here for a while. Here's another example of a barrel bolt. See, it doesn't really, unless you mess with it. But that one was actually easier than usual. So this is the chick shaw. I've made a few little hacks since, uh, since I built it. Um, this lid, we had a really bad wind uh, thunderstorm come through with like a big gust of like a 60 mile an hour wind. And this was unlatched and propped open with the block of wood. With a block of wood. The wind hit it and went whoosh. And this thing probably weighs 40 pounds. And it swung over and slammed against the back side and split the wood down. It was pretty pretty heavy duty. So I'm glad I put four hinges on the other side of this. I was able to fix it and get it uh, refitted, but keeping that latched most of the time is key. Also went through and drilled a bunch of holes in here for additional ventilation um, because we started putting straw in the, in the bottom to kind of absorb the, the, the waste and make it easier to clean out, which kind of blocked some of the airflow. So I added some of this. It helped a little bit. So this is the other side. Um, I uh, created a whole different way of venting on this side. Uh, with the other coop, if it's open ventilation, um, it, it has two vent doors that you can open and close. Um, this one really didn't have any kind of ventilation. The floor is open on the, on the bottom with just hardware cloth but there's no way for it to off gas. These holes helped, but I ended up just cutting a 10 inch strip of this uh, side panel off and hanging it on nails so this can be pulled off. And uh, it allows you to kind of prop it open and still keep the rain from going in. And then I just put hardware cloth over the hole and it has helped a ton. Uh, I'm probably gonna do this to the other side, but like I said, I like to do things incrementally um, and then see how they work and then decide whether the, to continue making changes.
Look how big Ed's getting. Lost all of his yellow. He's, got, he's gotten all of his down. He's still he's starting to get his big boy goose voice, but he still squeaks. He's been a cool a cool addition to the to the homestead. Not much of a protector though. No. He's kind of clumsy. He has a little bit of trouble getting up the ramp to go to bed at night. Sometimes we need to help him. So. I may change the ramp, the angle of the ramp. Make it a little easier for him to get up. But him and the ducks love this pool. I put I took the barrel bolts off of these because these were impossible to close. And uh, just did these little simple latch things. And look an egg. So now it doesn't matter how this thing is twisted or oriented after you move it, it's just, it's going to close. And this is why farmers with experience always do that. And it doesn't cost anything. Well, that's it. Uh, just a couple little hacks that I've been doing around here on the chicken coops. Um, as I said, over time, as, as I see things, I try to change things up a little bit and make them a little better. Um, not a lot going on, on during the day because it's so humid and hot so we uh, spend more time inside and I'm editing a lot of videos. Probably build a whole separate chicken coop uh, in another project coming up. Uh, we're going to try some different things and uh, I'll keep you posted on that as, as that uh, gets closer. But other than that, uh, y'all enjoy your day and we'll see you in tomorrow's video. He's like a big stuffed animal. Some kind of protector he is. Don't squeeze him. I didn't squeeze him. He doesn't like it. Aww. He's just like sighing, like, oh, really? Do I have to put up with this? No more T-Rex arms. She takes off my cooties. How about you guys? You want love? Come love me. Love me. <laughs>